Hi there, welcome back to Camera Than Coffee, where I love to talk about cameras which are most loved by fellow creators. And today, I'm here to quickly share with you a few important specs of Z9 that have been in the conversations of fellow creators from last two months. So, according to the conversations, the Z9's body will be inspired by the D850, D6 and a glimpse of Z9, combined with the imaging of Canon EOS R5. Cool, it's a beautiful day, so without any further ado, let's begin. Finally, after a long wait, the first teaser of Z9 is out, and we got the first glimpse of the backside of the camera, which almost tells us everything about the external body. The very first thing I noticed in the teaser is the top of the camera, that closely resembled the Nikon D850. On the top left, we can expect to see a release mode dial that houses four buttons on the top white balance, quality, metering and mode button. Towards the right an info screen identical to that on Nikon Z7, a video recording button, ISO exposure compensation and a shutter release button around which we have an on and off switch. Moving towards the back there is a protection button on the left that protects your photographs from accidental deletion and next to it is a dedicated trash button. Above the screen there is Nikon's signature circular eyepiece, a display button and a switch to shift from still to movie mode or vice versa. Slightly on the right there is AF on button which has the same effect as pressing the shutter release button halfway. And on the extreme right there is a command dial. Below that we can see the joystick, info button, a directional pad, zoom in zoom out menu and the media playback button. And lastly, below the screen, there is a mic and record button, quality, white balance and an info button. Cool, now let's get inside the body and look at the specs coming super soon. So the first good thing we'll get in Nikon Z9 is a newly developed FX format 45 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor that will capture incredible quality, low noise and wide dynamic range. It's same as the one on Canon EOS R5 quite close to the ultra high definition sensor on Z7 but smaller than the one on Sony A1. And along with the new sensor, the Z9 is expected to have the new X-Speed image processing engine which will help the camera deliver fast image processing, better buffer capacity and a good interface response. And together, the bigger sensor and the new processor will definitely contribute to burst shooting rate. As heard, the Z9 will have a burst shooting rate of staggering 30 fps as on A1, better than the Z7 and Canon EOS R5. Another thing that will put Z9 ahead of Z7, Canon R5 as well as the Sony A1 is the capacity to capture 16-bit RAW images. Another big thing that we noticed in the teaser is the dual pivoting display which means that we'll be able to tilt it in both landscape and portrait orientations. And as soon as we do that, the screen info will rotate as well. Good one. And this further confirms that it's not a fully articulated screen. In other words, we won't be able to flip it towards the front. By the way, if you have seen the teaser, you might have noticed that when the photographer turns the camera from landscape to portrait mode, the AF box on the model face turns into two, one on each eye and not just on one eye like other cameras, which adds weight to our expectations that we'll be getting an option to choose between the two eyes. Long story short, we'll be getting a faster autofocus, more accurate eye tracking, more FPS, thanks to the big sensor. In addition, we already have a rumored info that along with animal and bird autofocus, the Z9 will also have a car autofocus or we can say object detection autofocus which we recently saw in Canon EOS R3. And one thing I must share is that even when the light is not in our favor, we can expect a good low light performance at a light level of up to minus 7 EV. Another thing that will come to our rescue in low light situation is the ISO range on Z9 which is 64 to 25 600. It's pretty good, but not as good as on Canon EOS R5 and Sony A1. Moving on, the next thing which will move Z9 a step ahead of Z7 is the high resolution blackout free VF. But internet doesn't tell us whether it will be 5.76 million dots as on EOS R5 or 9.44 million dots as on Sony A1. Hope it gets the one with 9.44 million dots. And yes, following the trails of all great cameras in the market, 
The Z9 will have dual card slots that will house two XQD and Civic Express cards. And now my favorite video specs. The Z9 is expected to match up with Canon EOS R5 and Sony A1 with 8K recording up to 30fps and 4K recording up to 120fps. Plus there will be a support of ProRes RAW internally. That's great. Now there are two things that I really wanted to know more about. First is the GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System, which is on top of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And this could be a first for any camera manufacturer. And second is the multi-leaf blade shutter that will automatically cover the sensor when switching lenses. And now one of the most important things, the price. And it is rumored that Z9 will be priced at something between $6,000 to $7,000. But not beyond that. Uh, somewhere very close to the price of Sony A1. Let's see. And yes, the countdown is about to finish and it is expected that Z9 will be launched next week if the chip supply permits this. Because the camera brands have been facing the chip shortage for quite a while now, making fellow creators wait for way too long. Anyways, let's hope for the best. Let me know what you think about Z9 and let your heart speak in the comments. Cool. Thank you so much for stopping by and if the video was helpful, do support me by subscribing. See you in the next video.